So come on, why stand with God's heart for Israel? You know, it's sometimes not taught. It's sometimes not popular. You could be like a sore thumb, you know, but you know, reason number one, God loves Israel. The prophet Jeremiah states very clearly that yes, God says, I have loved you with an everlasting love and therefore with loving kindness, I have drawn you. Again, I will build you and you will be rebuilt, O virgin of Israel. That's Jeremiah 31 verse 2 through 4. After a season of judgment, season of the sword, God brings his everlasting love upon his people. Deuteronomy 7 verse 7. And this love will also bring it to a glorious light, engulfing the world like from the dead. You see that in Romans 11 verse 15, life from the dead. I'm going to talk about that a few times. You know, someone once said, you know, how can you love Israel who has, there are many sinners in that country. They're not all believers. And I'm like, yeah, very few believers actually. But uh, here, look, this is what I would answer. I'd say, well, did God love you because you were so good? You know, or did he have a plan for you and an everlasting love? The same way he has a plan and an everlasting love and a covenant uh, for Israel. Messiah died while we were yet sinners, Romans 5 verse 8. There's a simple rule. We love because that's what God has said in his word and because that's what he loves. Come on for number two. God keeps his word. He keeps his covenants. You know, he made a promise to Israel to give them the land of Canaan, give us the promised land. And we see how he appeared to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. He reaffirmed his covenant. He made covenants. Um, I could talk forever about covenants, but you see the one with Abraham, Genesis 15. And it's just God is a covenant keeping God. And he says, I'll take you through this journey where you're kicked out, scattered in the diaspora, but I will bring you back. And that's even told from the very beginning, this plan. God hallows his name. The prophet Ezekiel chapter 36, he talks about how God's name is really profaned when his plan isn't happening. The Jewish people are scattered and God says, I'll gather you and they're scattered. And it's like the enemy's like, ha ha, you're not really doing what you said. And so God's name is laughed at. But when his word comes true and we're a part of that, it honors, it, it sanctifies God's name which was profaned throughout the nations. It says that his name was profaned everywhere because people said, ha, God doesn't care for you. You know, in the Holocaust, ha, look at you. But yet God says, I will redeem you and I will redeem my namesake for my namesake. That's why I'm gonna restore you, not because you're so great, but because I'm great. Israel is truly a key for revival. It's important to remember when you look at Romans chapter 11, you know, and it talks about, um, for this cause salvation came to the nations to make Israel jealous. It goes on and you got verse 15. It says, what will be, you know, if their scattering was riches for the nations, what will their acceptance, their restoration be, their gathering be, their aliyah, but life from the dead. And that's revival. People praying for revival, but that is a key. In Acts 3, verse 19 through 20, Peter also sees that a spiritual restored Israel will release times of refreshing from the presence of the Lord and the times of the restoration of all things in Acts chapter 3 verse 21, which eventually brings the return. It says he must remain in heaven until the restoration of all things spoken of by all the holy prophets. That means it's a key for the outpouring of God's spirit, which is still to come on the world and in greater measure on the ecclesia. Or to put it in another way, if you thirst for a revival, pray for Israel. We owe it to the Jewish people. In his letter to the Romans, Paul recounts the time with the churches of Macedonia that they lavishly poured out a love offering for the poor in Israel. It was such a substantial gift that Paul decided to deliver it personally to Jerusalem. But why did they give so much? Paul explains, for it pleased those from Macedonia and Achaia to make a certain contribution for the poor among the saints who are in Jerusalem. It pleased them indeed, and they are their debtors. For if the Gentiles have been partakers in their spiritual things, their duty is also to minister to them in material things. Romans 15, verse 26 and 27. The believers of Macedonia understood an important principle. Salvation came from the Jews. John 4, verse 22. They were obligated to return a gift of thanks. We need to remember that Jesus was Jewish. The authors of the Bible were Galileans. And everything that defines our faith today, even the sacrifice of Yeshua and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, took place in Israel through the Jewish people. Thus, Yeshua himself declared salvation is of the Jews in John 4 verse 22. 
the roots of the faith are in Israel. Romans 11 talks a lot about this olive tree, a cultivated olive tree, a wild olive tree. Paul talks about something very interesting called grafting, how you take a wild branch and you put it into the original tree. It's amazing to see this process in action. But now I will not treat the remnant of his people as the former days, says the Lord. Just as I determined to punish you and your fathers provoked me to wrath, and I would not relent. So again, in those days, I'm determined to do good to Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. That's the prophet Zechariah chapter 8. These verses describe a total reversal of how God relates to Israel. It is a, a time of restoration for a people that are downtrodden and dispersed. Jewish people are indeed the family of Yeshua. Paul puts it this way, you know, uh, I mean, you know how Yeshua said, if you've done it unto the least of these, my brethren, you've done it unto me. I love how Isaiah 40 says, comfort, yes, comfort you, my people Israel. Isaiah 40 verse 1, it's not saying comfort yourself. It's saying for the nations to come around and comfort Israel. It's beautiful, beautiful to stand alongside what God's doing. And this is the time to arise. This is the time to shine this is the time to gather together from throughout the world. I'm so honored to be part of this family and to have had this heart-to-heart -heart talk. God bless you each and every one as we step into the next stage together of restoration.